local, late breaking. This is WDSU News This Morning. And good morning, everybody. A look outside at the Crescent City. Look at there. Oh, poor guy. He's out of breath. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, congratulations to those who made it to the finish line because I know if I were out there, I would probably still be struggling to get <laughs> to that point. There, Charles. Oh, there he was. I saw was him. Yeah, it was him. Got yeah, his hands in the air. Yeah, our very own Charles Divins out there. He completed the race, so congratulations to him as well. So it was such a great event. Over 20,000 people show up to the Crescent City to take part. And it's such, you know, it's a good cause. Mm -hmm. So I'll be out there later this afternoon, of course, doing some stories with those folks. I'm excited to go out there. But how should I dress? Well, I mean, it's going to be warm by this afternoon. We're getting into the mid-70s. It wasn't bad race weather either. Mm -hmm. I mean, no rainfall, yeah. just a little warm, a little bit cloudy out there. But at least the rainfall stayed away for most of us. Now, we do have some showers and storms that take place right now, yeah, on the radar near the coast right now. Take a look at the satellite and radar picture, and pretty strong ones, and these are all extending off toward the Mississippi Gulf Coast, Mobile, Pensacola, uh, and they're starting to move off in that direction, but we still do have a couple of strong storms around that area. That'll be close to Buras and around Port Sulphur right now. We do have a uh, strong thunderstorm moving through, and as you can see, lots of lightning associated with this storm. It is moving quickly to the northeast at about 40 miles per hour, so you'll have a heavy downpour. It's going to be pretty brief, though, and again, all this will continue to push off. Looks like it'll miss Biloxi and Gulfport, but push off toward Mobile and Pensacola. That's where they're going to have probably some flash flood warnings in that direction as we've seen those storms training over the same area. Uh, for the last hour or so. So we're still dealing with a few showers and storms, but it is going to improve even close to the coast within the next half hour to 45 minutes or so. Temperatures are in the mid to upper 50s right now. On the North Shore, we're looking at low to mid 60s south of the lake. Still at about 59, though, over in Homa. And as you look at the winds, they're calm, but we're seeing winds uh, coming out of the east and will eventually come out of the southeast by late tonight. But only about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Boothville reporting about 12 miles per hour. That's likely with that storm moving through. So as you look at the hour by hour forecast for today, mid 60s by 10 a.m., 71 by 1 o'clock, and then our high gets up to about 75 degrees. We'll keep about a 20% chance of rainfall today, and most of us won't see much rain at all. And the majority of the rainfall we're going to see today is going to be close to the coast, 72 by 7 o'clock and 69 by 10 p.m. Now that stationary frontal boundary that's causing all that rainfall close to the coast is going to move to the north tomorrow, and with that, all of our rain chances are going to increase about 80%, unfortunately, for Easter Sunday tomorrow. We'll look at that forecast model and time it out coming up in just a few minutes in the full forecast. Bar. All right, Jesse, thanks for the update. Well, from Commitment 2016, this is a reminder for you. Early voting for the April 9th election starts today, and it goes on through next Saturday, April 2nd. So you can early vote every day from 8.30 a.m. until 6, except for Sunday. So be sure to check with your parish registrar or voter's office to find out where you go to cast your ballot. Well, right now, more than 25,000 runners and walkers have hit the street this morning for the Crescent City Classic. Here's a live look outside for the 38th annual running of the 10K, which is 6.2 miles. The 10K began in front of the Mercedes-Benz Superdome area on Poitras. Of course, runners went through the French Quarter all the way up to Esplanade Avenue and ending at City Park. Of course, there will be bagged meters and signs, so here's a warning. If you're headed in this direction, there are parking restrictions along the running routes. Also, some traffic problems there, so avoid all of these areas if possible. Well, the driver who crashed head-on into former Pelicans head coach Monty Williams' wife had meth in her system, and that's according to a coroner's report. 52-year-old Susanna Donaldson and 44-year-old Ingrid Williams died in the accident that happened last month in Oklahoma City. Donaldson was speeding, going 78 miles an hour when she hit Williams' car. Monty Williams is now the assistant coach for Oklahoma Thunder. He has taken a leave of absence for the rest of the season. And OPD officers could soon be freed up to focus more on crime and less on traffic control. Lawmakers approved a bill that allows citizens to help direct the flow of traffic during busy events, similar to today's Crescent City Classic. The bill essentially allows NOLA Patrol to undergo training with the NOPD, then have direct control and regulate traffic within areas of the city. Under state law, only law enforcement officers, commissioned law enforcement officers, can do traffic control. So that's what this bill aims to do, is to just grant the city of New Orleans the option to be able to do this. The civilian traffic officers will not be able to issue any citations, and they will not work closely with NOPD officers who are on duty. Now, the bill is expected to win final legislative approval. 
unemployment rates are high in Louisiana, so much so that the state's unemployment rate is the seventh worst in the country. Louisiana's unemployment rate is just under 6%. Now, that's a slight improvement from February of 2015's rate of 6.7% but it is still higher than the national average. The national unemployment rate is just under 5%. The New Orleans Event Center had its grand opening this week, and it has moved from Kenner location to a building on Poitras Street, just about a block from the Superdome. Now, the center provides individual and group counseling, as well as outreach and referral services for veterans and their families. Veterans can seek treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder, alcohol and drug assessment, and even suicide prevention. These services are free and confidential. We don't have a wait list, so you can walk in, but it's best to have an appointment. There are, we only have five counselors. If everybody, and we keep a pretty busy schedule, so if everybody's involved in a counseling session, which usually lasts an hour, a group session lasts an hour and a half. So if you walk in, you may have to wait. Well, the vet center will be open every day except Fridays from 7 a.m. until 6. Walk-ins are available, but it is advised to make an appointment. And you can get more information at WDSU.com or on the WDSU News app. Letters to vandals. The message a group of preschoolers are sending to bullies in one, look, in one Minnesota community. Also, a live look outside. This is WDSU News this morning.